Hello everyone. Uh, since I posted that little piece about my drum room here at home, I've had requests from people to have a look at my stage kit. The ones in the drum room were basically studio kits and a couple of smaller drums I use for private things. Uh, I shot a little bit of video for Pearl a few years ago of one of my stage kits and they're all the same. I mean, I just replace them as they get sort of worn out by the road, dropped by freight companies, etc. Uh, so I did this for them, uh, but I wasn't happy with the, uh, the sound quality on the finished uh, piece because it was a very windy day and I couldn't get, uh, couldn't get what I wanted. Anyway, as we've had these requests, I thought I'd utilize the video footage again and do a more detailed explanation of the kit with hopefully better sound. So let's go and have a look at it. So here's the kit. Uh, I've used the same configuration of drums for a long time now. Can't remember when I ended up with this, uh, with this setup. Uh, everything's based around a very big bass drum. It's a 26 by 14 inch. Uh, it gives me a sound that on stage that smaller bass drums just can't do. With the big bass drum, it's not about punch. It's about actual sound, volume, displacement of air, even subsonics. It's a different sound and uh, I'm so used to it now on stage that if it's not there, I really miss it. Uh, even when I'm doing it with a 24 inch kick on different things, I have to think differently. The, uh, the change in sound is quite uh, severe. I have seven toms on the stage kit, uh, three of which I really play as a kit. The others are either effects or in some cases they're cosmetic. Uh, the three small toms you see in this strange triangular configuration are that way because it's the only room I have to get all the drums together in a, in a position where I can actually hit them. Uh, as I like the ride cymbal so low on the, across the bass drum, there is no way to do a normal set of spreading the toms across the top of the bass drum. Tube floor toms. Pretty standard sizes, although big, 16 by 16 and 18 by 16. I don't use a lot of damping in the bass drum. Uh, I want to control the sound, not kill it. Uh, there's no point in having a great big bass drum if you're going to muffle the hell out of it so it sounds like a little bass drum. That makes no sense at all. Uh, obviously, I'm using the, the Pearl Ian Pace signature snare drum. Uh, 14 by six and a half, a uh, very simple drum, but uh, being made out of steel, it uh, does give me a lot of low end, which some of the uh, more complex shells uh, don't. They give more top end, but in the context of Deep Purple, I don't really need that, especially as most of my sound that you hear is being created by microphones. We can tweak the sound on that. All the drums have uh, microphones inside them. There's a wonderful company called May Mics, run by a great guy called Randall May, and he designed this system for drummers to allow them to get more separation on stage, which helps the front of house engineer to get a really good drum sound for the audience. And the monitoring I use on stage, uh, which is massive, it has to be to capture all the frequencies of that big bass drum. Uh, the internal mics give me great uh, clarity and punch on stage, so I can actually hear what I'm doing against all these big amps. The cymbals are all Peisty 2002s. Uh, I'll go through them with you. They're on my left hand side. There is a China cymbal, 22 inch. Uh, next to that is a massive 24 inch crash, and below that, a 22 inch ride cymbal. Uh, in the middle you see some little splashes, sometimes they're 8 inch, sometimes they're 10 inch, depends which kit I've got. 
at that moment in time. And then on my right, there's a 22 inch crash cymbal and 15 inch sound edge hi-hats. I know that the, uh, the modern trend is for smaller cymbals, 16, 18, maybe 20s. I don't like that. I don't like this short duration stuff. I, when I hit a cymbal, I want it to ring on. I want it to be part of the kit. I don't want it to go and go away. I want it to decay beautifully and slowly. So around the back of the kit again, uh, we see the double bass drum pedals. Uh, drummers know what they are. I don't need to explain anything there, but for people who aren't drummers, uh, sometimes you see a guy on stage with two bass drums. Nothing wrong with that. It just takes a lot of room up. And quite honestly, if you've got a double kicker, you don't need two bass drums. But most of the things we, we do requiring that extra power, you can do it with one bass drum with the, the double pedal. Uh, I use it very, very sparingly because I'm not that great with it. Uh, obviously, if I'm going to play Fireball, or another piece of music that has the need for that extra woomph, extra power, and that those double bass drums will fit the pattern, then I utilize it. Or if I'm trying to make a big statement with a fill, I'll utilize it, but mainly I leave them alone. I'll go through the size of the kit for you. All well, the rack toms, pretty much standard. 10 by eight, 12 by eight, 13 by nine, 14 by 10, 15 by 10. The floor toms are 16 by 16 and 18 by 16. As I said, the bass drum is a 26 by 14. I like a, a thin bass drum. I, I'm not a lover of these very, very deep, 20 inch deep, 24 inch deep bass drums. I don't see the point of it. The, the narrower the shell, the, to me, the, the quicker the transfer of sound goes from the back to the front head. Uh, I may be wrong, but that's the way I see it. And of course, the, the signature snare drum, which is standard size of 14 by a little deeper than some six and a half inch. All the drums are Pearl Masters. Uh, I can never remember the exact designation of them. They're MM somethings. I don't know, not my business to know that. Uh, the main thing is that they're all very thin shells. 
They are four ply shells and a thinner shell gives you more low end, which is what I like. Anyway, there's the kit. I hope you've enjoyed looking around it. Uh, maybe you'll get a chance to hear it in action sometime next year. I really hope so. Thank <laughs> you.